we will ask Mr. Guillaume Santoni uh, to uh, to have his uh, to give his stance on the report you just uh, presented. Mr. Santoni, good morning. Hello. Mr. Santoni, you are an associate professor at Agopitech, and uh, you are also a member of uh, the Acad Academy d'Agriculture de France. And your work uh, focuses on biodiversity and forest. Your last book is just about that. <laughs> and it's called Le Climat qui cache la forêt, or the claim climate hidden in the forest. So, uh, Mr. Santoni, if you may take the floor and tell us your feeling about this report. Thank you very much. Um, I hope you can see the, the presentation. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to speak about this report, which is a difficult task because, in fact, uh, I agree mainly with um, uh, the, the big majority of the report. So maybe I'm going to review some points uh, and uh, raising some two or three questions on, on subject where I, I don't really disagree, but I, I, I ask question to myself. Um, uh, and I will review that quickly. So um, first of all, uh, biodiversity, what is it and trends? This has been well explained and I have no uh, difficulty with that. We know that biodiversity is about three things, diversity of ecosystem, interspecific biodiversity and intraspecific biodiversity, which play also for human being. The state of biodiversity is not good. Um, Again, vanishing of one species is not a problem. The problem is the rhythm of extinction, which is much too fast. And we know very well, this is a consensus, there is a consensus on that now, what are the five great causes of biodiversity loss, which raise the first point is that um, the, the presentation of the report say that climate change and biodiversity crisis were uh, interlinked, where are twin crises. That's true, but as you can see, climate change is not the first cause of uh, biodiversity loss. And the solution for uh, climate change and for biodiversity loss are not the same. They are partly the same, but uh, we are not going to uh, solve the biodiversity issue by solving the climate um, crisis uh, issue. I will take more time on, on uh, the relationship between biodiversity and economy by raising uh, four main points. First of all, um, biodiversity is a way of uh, diversifying the risk. Um, some years ago, 10 years ago, there was a um, European strategy for biodiversity and the title of this strategy was our life insurance, our natural capital and European Union biodiversity strategy to 2020. That means the title of the European uh, strategy for biodiversity was uh, considering that uh, biodiversity was a life insurance, which raised, ring a bell to, to insurance uh, people, I think. The second thing, which is very well known also by the insurance industry, I think is the portfolio theory, which was invented by an economist named Markovitz, which uh, won the Nobel Prize of, in Economy for that. And we, he, he has shown that um, you, you have a relationship between risk and uh, the return of an, of an asset, of a stock. And that relationship is uh, different. And if you want to diversify and to minimize your risk, you have to diversify your portfolio asset. It's exactly the same, um, the same way of thinking for biodiversity. Um, biodiversity it is a way of minimizing the risk. And you can see this there that it's about the same scheme out there. You can diversify the risk from life coming from biodiversity by diversifying your asset. And this is true as well as for domestic biodiversity in agriculture or in forestry uh, than for um, um, uh, wild biodiversity. And um, a practical example, which was made by Jean-Francois Susanna from INRA, he has shown that in the, in the meadows, you have a relationship between the number of plant species and um, the, the biomass production, the weight of the biomass production first, and then the storage of uh, CO2. That means uh, more you have species in a meadow, more you have a production uh, of biomass, and more you have sequestration of uh, CO2, which means the importance of diversity in the world, biodiversity. Uh, biodiversity is also a free factor, or well, several free factors of production. And here, the very important concept, I think, is the concept of ecosystem services, which, while, which was um, 
used by scientists since uh, after the, the World War, the Second World War, but which was legitimate in a way by the, the, the very important report by the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment in 2005, uh, which has shown uh, that um, ecosystem were delivering some goods and some services. This has been, it has been explained by the, by the presentation of the report. And this concept is now key to understand the economy of biodiversity, I think. So here I will have a first maybe a disagreement by the, with the report. By, but uh, as you can see, I make a, a, it's a question more than a, an affirmation because in the report it is, it is said that the, 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 the economic valuation for biodiversity has limitation. Yes, it's true. But uh, I think we can go further and we can have economic valuation for biodiversity. And I think it's very important for the business community because uh, we cannot only rely on the fact that uh, is beautiful and we have, we have preserve it for aesthetic or emotional reason because this will not work from my point of view in a market economy. And the second uh, thing which I question is that the protection of biodiversity would not be profitable in economic terms. And I think that in some case, uh, it is profitable. So I will try to show that. Uh, sorry, I make First of all, uh, on the value of biodiversity, we have several studies trying to show uh, total value. Of course, these studies, these studies are not uh, very precise and complete, but you can see that they show a very high number, it's order of magnitude, and these number are um, of course, in the same time, impressive, but also contested because they are uh, above the, the world GDP, which makes some problem. I will not enter into this debate, but in another way, it's showing how, how much important is this uh, free production. Uh, then we can enter in some other value uh, on the based on biodiversity, for example, ecotourism. You can see it's a, it's a very high turnover. Uh, some more specific, you can see that water birds, water birds only bird watching in the US, the turnover is, is something like $10 billion. You can see also that um, we have been talking about coral reefs, the, the great uh, coral reef barrier in, in Australia has a turnover uh, of more than $4 billion, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, same for fishing, the same thing. For health, it's of course a big market uh, coming from biodiversity. You can see that we have all, in the world we have almost 40% of the drugs coming from one way or another from biodiversity. You can see, for example, that Pacific yew tree uh, is used for taxol for um, um, carrying a lot of uh, cancers and has an annual turnover of uh, close to two billion dollars, um, etc. So health is a big uh, is a big issue. Uh, the carbon value, of course, as you know, uh, uh, biodiversity um, has two roles in this field. First, it is conserving some stocks of, of uh, carbon, sorry, which are already there. And then the, the, we have annual flows. That means each year it's, uh, there is a captation of some uh, carbon, uh, some additional carbon, which, of course, is a, a, an important value in, in relation with uh, climate change. After that, we have some ecosystem value. That means we are able to um, put a value on some ecosystems. Wetlands, which are very important for several reasons. You can see that we, we, we are, some studies are able to put a value on some ecosystem services. For example, the flu control, which is very important for insurance in La Basse, which is east from Paris, which is a very important place because it's uh, uh, the, the Seine Valley and if we, uh, if we manage well this place, that can reduce a lot the, the flood in Paris. Um, the same studies have been made in, in Louisiana, et cetera. The contribution to commercial fishing, because wetland and notably coastal wetland is a place where a lot of fish reproduce. And we, we can find some average value, for example, for Europe. Um, it's something like 10,000 euro uh, a year, which is a huge because the value of one hectare of uh, wetland is not even uh, that, it's sometimes half of that. That means the, the produced value uh, for this, for all these services are more than the price of the asset, which is uh, astonishing. For, for the forest, 
We have done a lot of study on the French forest, for example. And what is that is wood, uh, which is something like 1.3 billion year, uh, euro, um, which, by the way, make uh, uh, the value of the asset of the total forest 70 billion, which is huge. But you can see that this commercial value is um, under uh, some other value, which today are not marketed value, which are, for example, the recreational value, which is very important, and the carbon uh, storage uh, value. Uh, then the biodiversity is also a social stabilizer because in, in the, the, more, the, the, in the biodiversity is more used by poorest people. It is far more important in their revenue, and this is true as well in the, in the south country, in the less developed country, and as well in the more poor people in developed country. You can see, for example, that uh, a study shows that in some uh, very uh, 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 underdeveloped country, let's say, the, 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 the biodiversity uh, and ecosystem services is a lot of the revenue and sometimes a lot of the tax revenue to the very well uh, known sentence of Pavan Subdev which was the main author of the chief report, saying that biodiversity is a GDP of the poor. And of course, if, bi if biodiversity uh, deliver less services, uh, we will have problem, um, not only social problem, but also uh, unrest problem. So where is the problem? The problem is mainly in that non-marketed value of biodiversity is um, in a lot of case, and I would say in the majority of case, uh, higher than the commercial value. You can show that by two examples, which uh, came from the Millennium Ecosystem, ecosystem uh, sorry, Millennium Ecosystem uh, Assessment uh, Review, uh, showing that in a lot of countries, notably Mediterranean countries, the value, the commercial value coming from forest is um, uh, sometimes uh, smaller than or, or equal to the non commercial value coming uh, from forest. And here you can see that in some cases, sustainably managed ecosystem deliver more value than once they are converted to a, a single issue. Uh, one of a very good example is, uh, is a wetland in Canada, but also a mangrove in Thailand. Um, another disagreement maybe, but again, it's a question mark more than an affirmation. Uh, the, the report, um, explained that uh, one of the problems of biodiversity is that it's a common good. And uh, so it's raised a free rider problem as well as climate change. I'm not completely sure about that. And I think it's a very important question for the business community and for um, insurer and reinsurers. Because first of all, a part of biodiversity is private. When somebody uh, exploits, uh, including in a sustainable way, uh, forest, it produces wood and it's a, pro a private production. Game, uh, you have private uh, hunting place where you can sustainably manage uh, the game. You have private reserve and a part of bi the biodiversity is not international, it's uh, uh, national or local. That means that in climate change, if France is doing effort and it's Gabon or China is not, are not doing efforts, it's self for nothing. But in, in, uh, in the case of biodiversity, it's, it's for example, China is not doing effort, but if France is doing effort, we can keep uh, uh, a rich biodiversity in France. Of course, it's not true for, by, for, for migratory birds and so on, but it's true for uh, sedentary um, uh, wildlife, which is, a, a, I think, an important difference. And then uh, you all know, I guess, the work by Ilino Rostrom, which has shown very well that uh, in common land manage, uh, the, the, there was a very well some possibility of rules uh, to uh, manage in sustainable way uh, nature and biodiversity. Risk. Um, we have good example of uh, risk um, coming from biodiversity or lower by biodiversity. You remember the, the Asian tsunami in 2014. Uh, the studies have shown that where the mangrove has been preserved, the, the, the damage were much lower because mangrove has acted as a buffer and as a, there was less dead and less uh, material destruction. 
We had uh, in, in the very recent days a problem in, in France and in other places in Europe with the, the, the frozen vine. And everybody was crying about that. But one of the cause of that, it's a reduction of the genetic diversity of the cultivated vine. Because some people which are stay with uh, diversity, with a um, variety of vine uh, resisting to frozen late in the spring season uh, are, are not a problem. So uh, maybe we could uh, reintroduce a bit more diversity to uh, smooth this problem if it's coming back another year. Else, uh, we are losing option value. Why we are losing option value? Because on an estimate of 10 to 15 million species, we have been able to describe only 1.8. That means about 15%. That, what, what that means? That means that some species are disappearing before we know these species. And this is, in these species disappearing, we could very well have the good drug for AIDS, the good drug for COVID, the good drug for this type of cancer or another one. And maybe we will never know because we will never know this plant or this uh, animal species which has disappeared. So it's a problem for human mankind. It's a problem for the turnover of pharmaceutical company. It's a problem for insurance and so on. And because this rate of extinction is so quick, it is sure that we are losing some species that could have, um, that could have been at the origin of very important uh, drugs. Uh, the new regulatory constraints, uh, it's also uh, something which insurance and reinsurance has to deal with it. Uh, I put you there the, um, the, the history of the thing. As you know, it has begun with the law NRE in 2001, which was concerning only the listed company. Uh, the, 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 the law for la transition écologique et la croissance verte in 2015 has insisted on the fact that insurance and reinsurance company was, were concerned by that and that was very much uh, uh, much more precise telling that they had to contribute to the energy and ecological transition, which is rather uh, precise. And uh, the new thing is that um, from 2009, the article telling that they had to include explicitly biodiversity associated risk in their annual report. And the degree of application of this, um, of this law, which is uh, written, and but which is not still published, it was supposed to be published in April, I guess, going to be published in some days, go uh, in the details and you see that uh, he's asking for um, this company to uh, demonstrate their alignment with long-term goals linked to biodiversity, uh, uh, quoting uh, CDB COP goals and et cetera, et cetera. So it's going rather uh, more and more precise. Uh, but uh, the, the, the legislation is not, uh, and the regulation is not uh, compl complying with the regulation is not enough because you can see some cases where you have repetition and covenant risk going beyond regulation. Maybe you all remember about the Rio Tinto example. They have destroyed a, a, an Aboriginal site in Australia last year. Uh, they had no legal problem because it, there was an authorization for that. So they, 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 they were not in fault with the regulation. But nevertheless, it has uh, caused uh, uh, it was a 36 years old, 36,000 years old place, and it has caused a, a scandal in, uh, in place, notably with the uh, Aborigine community, and it has led to the resignation of the CEO and some other uh, high responsible for, for Rio Tinto. That means what? That means that after the, the low license to operate, you have a kind of sociological license to operate, and there is some things that a, a company cannot do, uh, and maybe that an insurance or reinsurance company cannot ensure. And uh, for that, I think you have to be careful with protected area or even non-protected area, but which are biodiversity or spot. I've taken the, the example of an Aboriginal site, but it will be a, a, a biodiversity or spot non-protected. It will be uh, about the same, I guess. Uh, some biodiversity risk cost. We had uh, the Exxon Valdez example, where a study was made by uh, Aro and Solo, which were two um, Nobel Prize in Economy, by the way, showing uh, a, a huge cost. And we have also a study by, for the Erica um, spillover in, in Brittany, 
uh, you can show that uh, it was also some, some huge cost. And finally, the disappearance of an animal species cost, the uh, Indian vulture case it's shown in, uh, in the report. There is another um, case I've learned only some days ago because it's a publication which was made some days ago, so I was not able to completely read it. But uh, which is interesting is that it's made by uh, an, an AXA share on coastal resilience. I was not knowing this AXA share on coastal resilience, which is in California. And this center has shown that if uh, we have a, a, a lowering of one meter high of the coral reef in the US, it could lead to uh, more than $5 billion uh, natural hazard cost. So uh, that shows also that AXA and insurance are, are already working a lot on that. So two or three words on the COVID example. The, the, the COVID-19 crisis was announced. Uh, I'm not going to enter into detail because Philippe Grancola, has, uh, which is one of the specialists of this kind of subject in France, has very well explained the, the thing uh, this morning. But you can see that in this publication from 2015, um, we had the decomposition of the primary driver of past uh, disease emergent. And what is striking is to see that the first cause is land use change, which is one, one third. And the second cause is uh, agri agri agriculture industry change, which is both, to, the, both the two together, both uh, are um, responsible for 50%. Uh, and when you look at war or uh, climate and weather, it's tiny proportion in compare to that. So what were we knowing? We were knowing by uh, all the health organization in 2015, that means 14 years or 15 years before the COVID crisis, that we had a problem with the loose of uh, intact ecosystem because they play an important role in regulating the transmission of many infectious disease and that the change in ecosystem and the uh, loss of biodiversity have already altered the incidence of many infectious uh, disease. Uh, we were also, also knowing from this report that with high certainty, uh, the uh, overcrowded and mixed livestock practice uh, was um, leading to dangerous novel pathogens and SARS was uh, quoted at this time already. It was in 2015. Here are some of the uh, um, infectious disease which are related to the loss, the loss of biodiversity with high certainty or high confidence level is only uh, some, um, some uh, a synthesis because there is much more. And in France, we have also a report which is uh, published in 2011 from the High Council for Public Health au Conseil de la Santé Publique, which, which was uh, explaining very clearly that uh, we would have uh, numerous occurrence of new infectious disease because of the loss of uh, biodiversity. So again, in this case, you have like in the climate change uh, to compare cost of action and cost of inaction. The World Bank has shown that if we were able to invest 3.4 billion of dollars each year in animal health, we would avoid the double of uh, loss. Uh, to finish, some opportunities for uh, insurer and reinsurance. Of course, there is a, in biodiversity new markets. The reports I just show some examples. I'm not going to insist on that. Um, you have also some legal opportunities. I, I, I recall that we have a very specific directive from 2004 uh, on environmental liability. And uh, it's covering three main things, water, soil contamination, only when there is an important risk for human health, and also biodiversity, by the way, of protected species and, and uh, protected uh, natural uh, habitats. And this uh, regulation is rather uh, tricky because uh, it's not a regulation which is in, uh, leading to a monetary compensation, but to the restoration of the ecosystem and not only you have to restore the, uh, the ecosystem which was damaged, but you have also to uh, find a way to produce the interim loss during the time the ecosystem was had, the time when it is uh, restored. And that, that, that's in a very concrete uh, application of the ecosystem services uh, concept. Uh, the idea is that during one year, two years, three years, this ecosystem services has not been produced by the damage in the ecosystem, and they have to be produced because they are uh, missing to the economy. 
Other new markets, you have plenty of uh, possibility, uh, which are not in the report, but I can add, I add it. Uh, and finally, what reinsurance could do? Well, I am not a specialist of reinsurance, so I don't know exactly the business model. So maybe I'm going, I'm finishing by that in, in a direction which are not good. But first of all, um, uh, simple idea, uh, this minutes the risk, uh, having uh, encouraged preventive measure, eliminate of lower bad risk. I think that we have a moral hazard question, which is a type of question very well known in the world of insurance. Uh, is it normal to um, insure uh, illegal construction, illegal buildings, no, notably in protected areas or in a risk zone? Uh, it's a question which uh, has to be raised, I think. And the second thing that insurance insurance world could do, because he, Reinsurance world has already done it for climate change. I have to recall that Swiss Re or Munich Re, for example, were very active in the beginning to raise attention of the different states in the world for the take uh, measure to, to, to fight climate change. They could do the same thing for biodiversity. Uh, first of all, uh, first example, insurance need to invest in long-term assets with low but regular returns. They invest some time in forests. I think it's less than before. We have a, a very big debate in this moment to know uh, if um, the carbon storage by forests could be um, could could raise some payment for ecosystem services. I think it would be a good thing for several reasons. First of all, it will increase the forest and wetland return. By the way, it will diversify this forest return and it will incite. Uh, insights um, people to sustainable management of this forest. And the second uh, idea is that sometimes some uh, regulation, if they were, uh, if they had, a, if we had a better application of this regulation, um, it will diminish risk. And some of these regulation are very good for biodiversity. I take several examples here, but I would like to underline the, the French shoreline law, which is a good law, which is. Uh, coming back to 1986, it was adopted at the unanimity, which is very rare in France. And sometimes this law, the, this law was voted at the beginning for landscape reason. Then we have realized that it was very good for biodiversity because biodiversity is very good, uh, is very high on shoreline, more than inland. But now we are realizing that this law is also very good for uh, climate change of the risk coming from the, the rise of the level of the sea. Uh, because if all the places which um, are protected by the shoreline French law would have been urbanized, the risk on the shoreline would be much higher and it, is a pro it will be a problem as well for the state, for insurance and for the people. And I can, use, I can show you only one example, which was the, the Vintia problem. You, you remember the Vintia problem some years ago, 53 dead people, 2.5 um, billion damage, um, everybody has said it's a climate change problem. No, it's not a climate change problem. It's also a biodiversity problem because um, the, all these houses have been constructed in a shoreline protected place. And the uh, regulation, the urbanism regulation of the place was not in accordance with the shoreline law. So it, it, if you can see very well, we are very close from the uh, shoreline and um, this place was a wetland before so it was not a place where it was possible to build and all this uh, authorization has been delivered against the shoreline law. so sometimes this type of regulation can save uh, help to save biodiversity help to lower the risk and can be i think um, a good uh, part of the business model of the reinsurance thank you Thank you very much, Mr. Santani, for giving us a, a, a critical review of uh, this report. Um, I will return a, a few things um, that, that deserve to, to be underlined, I guess, uh, that uh, you have a different opinion maybe on the valuation issue, on the fact that uh, biodiversity uh, can be evaluated in some extent, uh, or at least part of it. And you gave us an example with the uh, coral reefs. Um, also, you, you discuss the fact that uh, biodiversity is a common good because, uh, of course, uh, uh, part of the nature uh, are appropriate, uh, belongs to people, so um, they are also responsible for what's happening on their territories. 
Uh, and uh, also, um, you underline that uh, the regulation we have today already uh, can give some opportunity and uh, maybe some uh, new markets uh, for uh, insurance and reinsurance. Um, just uh, to, to, to go just a bit further, we don't really have time, but just one more question maybe. Uh, we have some new kind of obligation in France, which, which are called a uh, real environmental obligation in France, ORE. And it, it brings a tax rebate for protecting a uh, forest or agricultural area. And what do you think about this? Is this kind of tool that could be uh, an inspiration for ranchers to tackle biodiversity? Yeah, it's it's a well it's a very well known um, uh, tool in in um, in the U.S. under the name of conservation easement in Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand, in South Africa, etc. The idea is to have some uh, contractual uh, way of protecting biodiversity. It's working very well uh, in the U.S. You have several uh, million of hectares which are protected this way. The idea is that the the the, the owner stay the owner of the place, but he has to uh, uh, comply with some rules, which are contracted rules. He, he contract with a, a, a moral person uh, qualified in the field of environment, and he agree to make some um, uh, some use or not use of the pledge, which are good for the conservation of the place. And he has a um, tax incentive, uh, rather important for, for to do that. So the biodiversity law in 2016 has um, put this system uh, in place in France under the name of OERE, Obligation Réelle Environnementale. I think it's a very good system. And I think that um, public body can use it, but also private body, for example, um, uh, we could very well imagine that insurance company could uh, in the, uh, incite some uh, some people or some company to uh, subscribe uh, to OERE, which could uh, reduce fluid, uh, uh, which could uh, reduce natural hazard, which could reduce loss of biodiversity. It's uh, the advantage of the system is that it's very decentralized and it's um, it's it's not costly because you don't have to. Um, to uh, buy the land, you know. Uh, for example, in France, we have an organism which is Conservatoire du Littoral, which is working well, but it's rather costly because you have to buy the land. In 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 this case, you can uh, you can um, arrive to the same goal with uh, in in uh, investing much less money. And a private company can do it. I, for example, uh, a company like Danone is already uh, using this type of tool under an, a different name to protect. The uh, what we call the um, the captage perimeter of the of the drinking uh, water. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Santini, for uh, all those very interesting examples on a concrete uh, solution to you on the line.